Hello everyone, anyone? I am ZL, ZL Gaming, etc. This is The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine Expansion. I am immediately into combat with this thing. That you guys uh, who've been watching the series know I love so very dearly. Darn it. That's the wrong way. What? You have a friend too? You've got a ghoul for friends. Well, I mean, I suppose I can't judge by the company it keeps, but. Come on, what you got? Oh, those explosions. Ooh, go close down. Ah! Got one. Well, bees entry ghouls. This kind of shows just how it is. It's late into the progress. Dang it. Darn it. <laughs> Thank you. If I didn't have my uh, special ability, I would have been in trouble here. Ah, so close. All right. What? There's, oh, okay, those are just the bulbs bursting. I was like, is there more? Seriously? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So. What? Okay, I've been hitting a gravestone this whole time. Oh, oh, good. all the stuff. Okay. Yep, got that ready. Alright, got it. Wow! You know what? I really wanted to meet my friend. Basically, the quest I'm on is go meet your friend in the cemetery. Or whatever, and I'm just a little bit like, what the heck, man? <laughs> Apparently, Roach got there before me. Uh, just in case we immediately are going into uh, battle, we shall meditate, replenish our potions and such. And yeah, there we go. Mmm, honeycomb. Think like a bear. Knock, knock, knock. Regis. Damn Kathy it. Lee. Locked. I got the place wrong. This is it. Gotta be. Gotta be another way in around here. I see. Okay. Well, I feel a little better for having killed those other things. Because... Hold on. Am I hearing ghouls underneath me? Ah. Do you want, wants me to examine this, right? Or just know that I'm going down into here. Okay, that is a insectoid. Let's get our insectoid potion rolling. Cause I've already got that. Shoot, shoot. Great. Come on, shoot. Come on. Now. Come on. Come on. Okay, back. Dodge. Hit. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Okay, seems like that worked out pretty good. Went to get rid of the, oh, I think I, did I, toxicity? How did I get tox, oh. I'm not sure how I got toxicity, actually. Must be whatever they put on me. Uh, it's like status screen. 
Ah, oh, whatever it is, it's not good. Corral takes a critical hit. Corral takes a critical hit. Corral takes a critical hit. Well, looks like it's starting to. Is it starting to leave you or no? Kick you more eggs. Need to incinerate these to ash. That's some stench. Yeah, my toxicity is up quite a bit. They increase my toxicity. Ah, now I see what's going on. But my toxicity is going down, right? Alright, I think what I'll do is I will just make sure I use... Uh, this is it, right? Cancel the toxicity effect. And now we can start eating great. Oh, good. Hold. A lot of times, better controls for, uh, like, I like the controls, uh, of third person games with the controller, but that said. Decaying bones. Kikimoras must have tunneled into the grave. Yeah, I love Kikimoras. I think I got it right, though. They are insectoids. But let's check out the glossary in the beast series, shall we? Yep. Yeah, they are vulnerable to Igni. White honey. Insectoid oil. Okay. So, do, 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 do. I'll just make sure this is good here. Just make sure that's up. And... Is white honey what I already have equipped? Because they're all this. Huh. It is. So basically it's just saying like, yeah, clearing your potion effects because they increase your toxicity levels. So. Make sure I got all of my bastard. Just Ooh. Yeah. Yep, we got a warrior now. Dang, he is not stunned at all by my BS. Oh, Cap's a quick save. Where are you? I need you more than ever. Okay. Now I need to go like this. Dang. There we go. Looks like. Nope. Oh, nope. <laughs> no dice. Oh well, that's the way it starts out. Alright, let me see, get myself back there. Because uh, I don't believe Captain Quicksave made an appearance after I burned all those things to the ground. So, we'll make sure I do that, and everything will be just... Oh! Apparently, it did after this point. Alright, so that's good. That's good, that's not too bad. Do, 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 do. Not the, do any crazy edits or whatever. But... Yep. And that. And sweat honey. And hold. And a little bit more here. And. That's some stench.
close to death. Thing. Wow, I'm doing terrible. Get me in the corner. Got him. Captain Quick Save says, Save your game. Okay. And now that this has changed, White Honey, leave those effects. Yippee. So, the warriors are definitely a bit stronger than the uh, other ones. And by a bit, I mean extremely so. But, uh, no need to fear. Nothing's too strange about this. And I'm just Decaying basically... bones. The Ikimors must have tunneled into the grave. Yeah. And because I'm afraid there'd be more of these. I gotta tell you, man, your homestead kind of sucks. Just saying. <laughs> to uh, Regis and Kathy Lee here. Boy, Moss. Oh, can I get through there? Maybe. Leap through. Is this an arm moment? It is. Here we are. Spooky. <laughs> Agreed to meet a vampire at a cemetery. How much more cliche can you get? <laughs> Nothing comes readily to mind. Could have left the door unlatched. What of my privacy? I value it rather deeply. Unmolested, especially by unwanted guests, that's my preferred state. Besides, I knew you'd find a way to get in. True enough. Need to find your friend. I'm hoping you'll agree to help. I shall do whatever's in my power. Yet what you want or even need must matter little. What matters is what Detlove wants. If he does not wish to be found, you will not find him. Ever. End of story. Come on. Gotta be some way. Hmm. Vampires can evade detection by the senses, and no divination magic works on us. Even the most precise megascope would be useless. And this? Could this help? Wherever did you get that? Off one of the beast's victims, found by a bend in the river. Body was chopped in pieces. Three of those pieces were hands. Hand with the ring seemed the odd one out. Bruxa had taken an interest in it. Hmm. Very intent on... It's Detlaf's hand, without a doubt. It will do splendidly. So, the ring. The ring's pretty intriguing. Made of no metal I've ever seen. And the ornamentation. It comes from our home. Where we lived before the conjunction of spheres. It's actually mine. I received it from a dear old friend. You might call him a humanist. He saw us vampires as guests here. Guests who owe their hosts, meaning you humans and the elder races respect respect meaning not to treat us like cattle to be slaughtered for food precisely and the reason why i in turn gave it to detlaf to remind him of the ideals my old friend championed all right back after a little bit of a delay that's why you see the cut can't you just summon detlaf you're both hired vampires there's got to be a way if i'm to be entirely candid there is indeed one 
but believe me, we will be better off never availing ourselves of it. It is a last resort. Absolutely. Last resort? The hell. Why? Uh... There is a being who can summon Declan. Possesses the authority, even the power, to force him to appear in a given place. But the very act of contacting this being... Well, it's akin to walking a slack line extended over a chasm filled with molten lava. Oh, An exercise as perilous to me as it would be to you. A risk I'm unwilling to take. I beg you, let's do it my way. It will be both quicker and easier. Hmm. The hand. What do you plan to do with it? You've heard of Kobinaris' theory of tissue memory retention. Hmm. Rings a distant bell. Read about it in Alchemia Obliterae. There's a copy of Kaer Morin, tattered, nearly disintegrated. But if memory serves, Covenarius never managed to prove it worked. He did prove it, just never managed to publish his findings. He and I corresponded, you see, after we became friends. Thus, I know he completed his research and performed the first tests. Hmm. It's complicated, so without delving into details, it is possible to use any piece of tissue to reconstruct what a whole body experienced. How's it work? We need any special equipment? We must brew a decoction which Kobinaris gave a rather poetic name. Resonance. Once imbibed, it sends one into a trance similar to that induced by narcotics. This triggers visions of events linked to strong emotions experienced by the tissue's owner. Picture it as dreaming a fragment of someone's life. Any chance we might see what Dedloff was doing just before he lost his hand? Indeed. Though I also hope Resonance will reveal the location of Detloff's hideout. Hmm. Alright, brew it. Covenarius spent half his life proving his theory. Wild guess. Making a dose of Resonance won't be easy. You've guessed correctly. In addition to Detloff's tissue, we shall need a powerful occipital lobe stimulant. Effectively a poison to make one susceptible to visions. Hmm. Well, got a few ingredients to choose from. Unfortunately, all are pretty rare. There's Mamoon glands, the closest ones I know of are in Vizimba. A spotted white saliva would also serve, but they were called to extinction over a century ago. Could go with a kobold's eyes, but the creatures are sentient. Rather not gouge one's eyes out. Hmm. Given that we lack the time to sleuth this out ourselves, permit me to summon some help. Hmm. What help is he gonna summon up, I wonder? Oh, it's moving! Ah! Only two eyes. We're, we're safe. What was that? A raven? Rather a common sight at this latitude. Very intelligent fowl. I asked him to look for the creatures you mentioned. Him and his brethren. Perhaps they'll find one in the area, and I would hazard that a flock of ravens will spy any said creature faster than a solitary witcher would. With all due respect to your skills, my friend. It will take them some time, nonetheless. So, perhaps you'd care for a snicker of mandrake. <laughs> sure. Rarely say no to a snifter. Sadly, this is but a weak infusion rather than a proper distillate. Even better. I remember your mandrake hooch. Made people say things they'd have rather kept to themselves. Now, what could Geralt of Rivia prefer to keep to himself? Hmm. Guess some... everyone's got some secret. I agree wholeheartedly. I also believe it wise at times to share one's secrets, unburden oneself to those one can trust. This your sophisticated way of asking me if I trust you? I prefer almost always to ask you directly. It seems a test of intelligence, one you just passed. Hmm. Maybe you should go first, reveal one of your secrets. After all, you vampires lead very interesting lives. Anything in particular interest you? Uh, yeah, what's it been like? What you curious what you did after you were reborn. As I'm sure you can surmise, at first I was thoroughly absorbed with recovering. 
As it is, I still not recovered completely. Yet I was so weak the first year that I could not stand nor move on my own. Detlef bore my weakness bravely, showed great patience. If not for him, I wouldn't be here, and I'd have regenerated far slower. Once I could at last stand unassisted, I set off for Bruges, for my one-time home of Dillingen. There I led the peaceful life of a rural healer and surgeon, enjoying my neighbour's respect and, in fact, constituting the exact opposite of the monstrous vampire the populace imagines. Bruges, you say? Rebirth make you sentimental? Perhaps, Sir Dash. But what of you? Where have you been? Ever find your Cirilla? Yep. Back then, yeah. But we parted again soon after. So, what's like being dead? Gotta ask you the big question. One everyone wonders about. What happens after death? You wish me to tell you if the human belief in the gods is well founded? Well, that I do not know. We vampires differ exceedingly from you humans. Our matter, that of which we are composed, can exist without form. We require neither a heart, nor a brain, nor air to breathe. But were you dead? As humans understand death, yes. Feel anything? Understand anything? Hmm. It's rather hard to explain. I felt something very unsettling something I cannot even name for I did no reasoning only after rebirth did I begin to understand that what I had felt was cold and unimaginable fear if not for Detlef I might have drowned in an eternity of icy terror can't have been alive then sheesh experience like that must be vicious mm. indeed it's it's hard to compare to anything I know. Yet you are aware we don't see death as you do. The way you cling to life, we find it entirely peculiar. You are mortals. Ergo, it's a foregone conclusion. You will die. It's but a question of time. Thus, I often find myself wondering why you try so very hard. To die at 20 years, 40, even 100, what's the difference? They're all but the blink of an eye. Hmm. Depends on your point of view man who's got a million crowns to spend can't possibly understand one who's only got 20. Very true. One's outlook can indeed change much. Yeah, so abstinence and drinking blood. Got a new life. New body. That give you a new start? Blank slate? Starting all anew is a very broad concept. What exactly do you mean? Your blood addiction, say. Wondering if your body's the same. It still remembers. Maybe if you drank now, you wouldn't get hooked. All addictions are a form of slavery. Re-addiction's not a risk I'm willing to take, just to test a hypothesis about corporeal regeneration and whether propensities <laughs> carry over. Fair enough. Curiosity, that's all. Sorry. Not to worry, Geralt. Curiosity's a natural reaction under the circumstances, apart from which I've always valued that trait in you. Hmm, what's it like? Always fascinated me the way vampires can regenerate. A hand growing back is one thing, but Detloff recreating you out of a wet smear? Something else entirely. A difficult and laborious process, but one that's possible. As my presence proves, but, but I've heard you too had quite the adventure. They say you lost your memory. For a bit, but Triss helped me get it back. Actually pretty damn lucky I only had amnesia. Yes, you humans are rather buggered in those terms. To strip you of life is, well, it's just plain easy. I've always pitied you in that regard. We vampires are much harder nuts to crack. If a member of another race kills one of us, we can be reborn with a living higher vampire's help. Hmm, However, do now. if one of our own strikes the deadly blow, death is permanent. There can be no rebirth. One of the chief reasons why vampires long ago swore never to fight one another. Says there's something you want to know, some specific. All right, give you one question. What do you want to know? One question to ask one as fascinating as you, Geralt. Cruel parsimony, I'd say. <laughs> but I shall do my best to make it count. If you were to die and be reborn as I was, in your new life, would you choose to be a witcher? Yeah. 
See, Regis. Doubt I'd know how to be anything else. Ever tried? See, so you're determined to get an answer. To find out if I like being a Witcher. Just refuse to ask directly, as always. <laughs> I like being on the path, I like picking up a lead, a trail, I like the tension right before a fight, and nothing gets my adrenaline flowing like battling a beast, even gotten used to people treating me like a freak, an outcast. Yeah, not something I think about much, but I like being a witcher. Thank you for being honest. Honesty is an attribute of the truly brave, and thus a privilege of the very few. Still no sign of your winged friend. Sure it understood what you wanted? Dead certain. Let's wait a bit longer. It'll return soon, don't doubt that for a moment. I really like Regis so far. Uh, get this feeling of camaraderie between the two of them. I find that often, Geralt. She's always so contentious. Usually because he's dealing with idiots. Ever vigilant even in his sleep? Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? <laughs> uh, compliment. Appreciate the compliment. Got something for me? You were right. No kobolds or baboons for miles around. Knew it. Allow me to finish. You see, there's this spotted light. It haunts an abandoned residence in the Caraberta woods. Impossible. My brethren hunted down every last spotted white before I was born. Then it seems you must revise your knowledge of spotted whites. For somehow this one managed to survive your brethren's onslaught. Hmm. It seems I know this home it haunts. Recall a tale about it. Locals believe the place cursed. Perhaps that's how the white survived entirely unmolested. Hmm, <laughs> nothing about this way. Whites rarely appear in the woods, even less likely to find them in abandoned human homes. They inhabit remote wildernesses, old abandoned cemeteries. What's your point? This might not be a spotted white after all. Your little helper might have made a mistake. I sincerely doubt it. Ravens are devilishly intelligent creatures, and they've highly developed observational skills. What exactly did they observe? The area around the estate. It's covered in... Spoons. Spoons? Spoons. Yeah, spare me the skeptical smile. I'm but the bearer of this news. Well, perhaps this spotted white is a hoarder. Or the spoons are somehow related to the curse. <laughs> what about this curse? Hmm. Know anything else about this curse? I don't recall much in particular. Really don't attach much importance to such things. It was mentioned to me as an anecdote, no more. Come on, search your memory. Something, anything could be important. Hmm. I believe it had a relation to hunger, or uh, no, um, perhaps greed, rapacity. Someone was punished for something. <laughs> Textbook definition of a curse, pretty much. <laughs> Sorry, Geralt, I try not to clutter my mind with the details of every far-fetched tale I happen to hear. Hmm. What are your thoughts? A specimen of a species thought long extinct, and a curse, in one place. That a coincidence, or are they related? Ah, professional curiosity. Personally, I've nothing against you delving into this dilemma, but please remember we need the white's saliva. Nothing beyond that. Okay, time to visit the white. Let's do this. Start making your decoction while I go get some saliva from that white. Uses it in its bruise. If you imagine the white will simply sell you some. Worst case scenario, I'll bring you with salivary glands. They ought to do as well. <laughs> For a moment there, I imagined you asking the white to spit into a vial. <laughs> Quite amusing as a thought, uh, but the salivary glands will do fine indeed. So, see you later. Yes, till later. I shall start by perusing some tomes. Tomes? Thought you were gonna make this decoction. We require one last ingredient. Alas, obtaining it could prove a trifle toilsome. Thus, I hope to identify a suitable alternative. All right. Good luck. And to you, my friend. 
Gosh, I like him. Also, like, that during that cutscene, it was like, hey, check it out, treasure! Just a gold plate. But still! <laughs> kind of a nice little uh, bit here. And optional, read the beast here and learn more about spotted whites. Let's do that, shall we? Uh, necrophage. Spotted whites. Best fans can spot a white, stay calm and leave them alone. Hmm. Subspecies which just drove to extinction. Larger and spotted kin owe their names to numerous blotches and infusions. Okay, Decrophage Oil, Igni, and Yarden. Okay, that's a standard kind of compliment there. Okay, cool. Like how it's just like this. Also like how very, very, very close. Oh, never mind. <laughs> level up it is. So We'll take this opportunity to level up, and uh, this may end up being a shorter episode just because of oh, Panther. Oh, Panther, how do you do? Majestic creature, die upon my! Oh God, gosh! Damn, smart for its own good. Oh, man, he got me in one hit. <laughs> Isn't that the way, though? Isn't that the way? These these Panthers and on this difficulty level absolutely remind me of, um, what's it called? Uh, Red Dead Redemption and such. But no, I'm getting this Panther. I don't know why, but it's become very important to me. <laughs> Hi. And... Yeah, and then maybe this. Yeah. Oh, come on. Thought maybe that would slow it down, but not really. Ooh, that was close. Ha! It did slow it down, but not enough. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna mash this all together into one big, you know, panther fighting fun thing of just like, yeah, this is me fighting a panther uh, at the very end of stuff. Fortunately, I have some stuff I have to take care of, but I don't want to break up the episode too much with my silliness. Always Quinn. And this actually seems to work kind of nicely against them. Hey, stop running off. Oh, that's right. Okay. Aha, slowed you down. Not the way for my Quinn to regenerate, hopefully. Nope. Uh. Uh. Nope. Nope. There we go. Yes, Panther! Destroyed. <laughs> I am the best at slaying all of God's creatures. Um, but anyway, uh, moving on through, let's check out the mutation tree, shall we? We have magic sensibilities, right? So the idea is to unlock another one of these. Oh, wow. I'm going to need more there. All right. Deadly counter. More damage to human opponents need to counterattacks in all cases. Attacker's vitality is less than 25. Counterattack immediately triggers a finisher. That's pretty darn good. Also, let's see. If you're each time major melee combat, attack your opponent receives damage amounts of every point of your toxicity, toxic, toxicity level. Let's go for this. We research this. We activate that. We can only have one activate at a time. I'm gonna go with what I had before, but extra ability slot at your disposal. The color of the ability you activate in extra slot must match the color of the active mutation. Uh, advanced mutation students would yeah, require, require multiple mutagens, but allow you to use anything from combat signs or alchemy groups. Okay, so in this new one, uh, I can't... Okay, there it is. What do I not have equipped right now? Uh, I don't have exploding shield equipped right now so I was able to put that in there 
or if I was if I had decided to instead uh, because for example this that's giving me attack power plus a whole bunch more I could use the other one and put that in there and increase my sign intensity the other ways all right it's cool it's a cool system I like it I think it's very cool um, in that regard so things that are basically I'm planning on doing kind of in between episodes uh, and such, or you'll see me do some of it in the next episode, but I'm gonna let you guys get, you know, get you the skinny and all the, oh, wow. Yeah, sometimes I still haven't realized I haven't tutorialized everything, so it's like, yep, you wanna talk some more? Let's talk some more. All right, so crafting, all right? I'd like to be able to master crafted griffin boots. Uh, Grandmaster level for level to unlock these bonuses. Uh, so I need to actually check my quests, right? To see if I have... Um, sometimes you actually get the sort of uh, senses to be able to find or who these people are. Or maybe I'm meant to unlock them uh, from... What's it called? Uh, unlock them basically from no place like home or whatever uh so that's an opportunity as well we'll have to look into that because the idea is that i would really 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 like to equip because these are only level 26 boots or whatever but the witcher said the upgrades are all worth it in the end so anyway that is the goal that i'm setting out for myself and we'll see how i get there so thank you very much for watching this episode i know it was a little short and i appreciate your guys patience but i promise you Whenever I put out a short episode or something, there will always be more to come. I uh, always be more that same day, in fact. Never try to let you down in that regard. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care till then, and I'll see you soon.